Now that we know what SOPs are required, we need to develop clear guidance for SOPs. If you already have SOPs covering operations, maintenance, or other tasks, you may only need to modify them to include energy-saving considerations. If you are developing SOPs from scratch, there are a few key components to include. Defining the purpose and application of the SOP allows those reading it to understand what outcome the SOP is trying to achieve and what it applies to. For example, an SOP for a manufacturing line might state that their purpose is to ensure production quality and safety while minimizing unnecessary energy costs. The application for this SOP could include manufacturing floor staff operating lines A2, A3, and A4. Next, the procedure steps should be defined. These should be developed with the input from people who are familiar with the process and responsible for or impacted by the associated tasks. The procedure steps should be laid out in a clear and logical order and should include specific instructions for task completion. Consider whether a newly onboarded staff member would be able to follow the steps to complete the task without further assistance. For example, when developing an SOP for HVAC controls in a hospital operating room, the HVAC operators should be consulted, as well as doctors and others who use the operating room and who may be affected. They will provide valuable insights into what requirements must be met and when. This knowledge can be supplemented with resources on best practices or standards, such as applicable ASH rate guidance on ventilation of healthcare facilities. Once this information is gathered, the procedure steps can be written down with clear instructions on things like how and when to enable temperature setbacks during unoccupied periods and who is responsible for setting and verifying control set points and when to do it. The SOP should include screenshots of the building automation system to illustrate where to find and manage the relevant control. Defining what good practice looks like is important for all parties to understand their contributions to efficient operations. Keep in mind that the first version of your SOP does not have to be perfect. It can be refined over time to fill gaps in instructions or as better practices are tested and implemented. Following the creation of procedure steps, you may want to include additional resources. These could be reference tables, checklists, and links to related SOPs, guidance documents used in developing this SOP or other relevant information. The goal here should be to make it as easy as possible for people to use and navigate the SOP and find the information they need. Your SOP is likely to change over time as gaps are identified, equipment changes, and practices improve. Keeping track of these changes can help ensure that everyone is using the correct version. So the last type of information you should include is metadata. The metadata you include may depend on how your organization manages documents, but it is recommended that you include at least the following. The SOP owner, the person with responsibility for maintaining the SOP, the current revision number of the SOP, the original implementation date, the last revision date, and approval from someone with responsibility for the relevant operations. The benefits of these SOPs will only be realized if people actually follow them. Ensuring that people consistently follow established SOPs can be challenging, but there are some strategies you can use to help ensure compliance. Number one, communicate the importance of following SOPs. Clear expectations and directions should be communicated through appropriate channels, including direct managers or team leads. Number two, emphasize the benefits to employees, such as how they can improve their performance metrics, reduce rework, or accelerate their skill development. Number three, train employees on the SOPs, monitor their performance and provide feedback to ensure they fully understand the procedures. Number four, Make the SOPs accessible by having them readily available where and when they are needed. Number five, encourage feedback from people who use the SOPs to improve clarity, accessibility, and usability of the SOPs. Number six, management should regularly reinforce the use of SOPs, including highlighting the benefits they provide. Number seven, 
As you begin to realize benefits from your SOPs, such as consistent energy savings, improved training and onboarding, or reduced downtime, share these with staff to reinforce the benefits and value of the SOPs. Establishing SOPs may seem like an uphill battle at first, but keep in mind that this is a process of continuous improvement. So it's a good idea to start simple and then gradually improve as you learn from experience.